Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to Musar with Shoshana. Today is one of our most exciting days because we've all just come back from a glorious week of dwelling in the sukkah with Hashem. And I don't know about all of you, but this has been the most surreal and amazing time. The it We've all that dwelled in the sukkah together this week have exclaimed that this seems to be, um, has been the, the best sukkot, the best sukkot ever. So we can only imagine that next year we will continue to um, go oh, higher and higher in Hashem as we continue to dwell with Him. So it's amazing and fitting that today our Musar is, as we're going to continue uh, from our last sessions that we stopped right before Sukkot began, and that is we're still on the Musar of happiness. Uh, <clears throat> happiness, we're going to spend a little, we're going to continue to spend um, a little bit more time with this because it is like one of the most important character traits that we can develop. So um, today is the uh, 23rd of Tishri, and as I was saying, we've just come back from the festival of uh, Sukkot and celebrating Simchat Torah was, um, it was just ecstatic. No other words can explain or describe it. It was just ecstatic and amazing. Um, we didn't want to leave. And seeing the men um, rejoice with the Torah as they danced and whirled around the bima was um, just heaven coming down and kissing uh, earth, as it were, just being caught up in the cloud of his glory. And we just, um, so today, I think we're all still feeling his presence in such a strong way. So today we're still walking in the cloud and I hope you are too. So what we're going to do is kind of find out how do we stay in that cloud, even though life circumstances uh, hit us, you know, right in the face as soon as we walk out of our Sukkot um, festival and we leave our Sukkah, we will find that all of life's responsibilities and pressures and uh, the stresses of life are right there to meet us and greet us. Amen. So let's find out how we can continue the joy of Sukkot as we face just our daily lives. OK, so I'm going to take some of our advice and wisdom from uh, Rabbi Torsky and one of his wonderful books. Um, this one is Simcha. It's not just happiness. So let's get right into it, can we? So we see that Simcha, joy, is the foundation of all of the mitzvot. Joy is the very foundation so mitzvot being our character traits, without joy and, and, and fulfillment of our purpose, all of the other character traits cannot really truly be defined. And um, we, we have to have that, inter, that, that inner joy. And that joy, as we know, only comes from Hashem. But it is something that we can work on and develop so that we can face life's problems. So <clears throat> he says here that, oh my goodness, Torah requires that we maintain an attitude of Simcha, even in times where sadness is proper. So what does that mean? Well, um, when we look at, for instance, um, uh, Tisha B'Av, the time where we are uh, mourning the loss of our temple, it is proper to have that sadness. It is proper to um, have feelings and connection with the sadness of the loss of our temple. But at the same time, because we know that his divine presence is resting within us, we can have joy because we have joy of the expectation looking forward to the, um, the rebuilding of the temple. And may it be soon in our time. Amen. So let's look at some more um, attributes here and aspects of this. So we know that we have to work on developing joy. Just like we have to work on all of our other midot, joy is one that we have to work on. So basically, joy is a process. 
joy is a process. Um, it's not, it's not just something that, uh, happens when there is, um, um, an outside influence that happens, something unexpected, um, Maybe even it's a birthday or other things that make us happy that's temporary. Um, sometimes getting a, a windfall of money, we can be so happy and elated, but it's all temporary. It's all temporary. So what is the joy that remains with us? So we see that um, Rabbi Torsky, he says, well, Midos, our character traits, are actually what gives a human being our uniqueness. It distinguishes us from any other form of living being. So a person, a person must first and foremost be a munch in order to accept the Torah. So what is a munch? A munch is one who has good character traits. We have to have good character traits before we can take hold of Torah, before we can experience the truths that Hashem is teaching us in Torah. We must first have a level of good character traits. We must have a good heart because our heart is searching for Hashem. And as we search for Hashem, He will reveal things to us in His Torah. So we must be a minch. We must have that, that goodness and that desire. And all it takes is a desire to want to be a minch that Hashem then begins to help us explore our attributes and how to refine them. So developing um, Simcha is a primary medot. Developing joy, happiness, it is primary to all of the other characteristics. He tells us that it is an escapable conclusion that Simcha is not only an important ingredient to Yiddishkeit Judaism, but Judaism is Simcha. Judaism is happiness. Being in covenant with Hashem, Judaism, is Simcha. It is happiness. It is joy. And it is riveting. And there's nothing that can take its place. There is no experience um, in this world that can take the place of being in covenant with Hashem. And that is where Simcha lies. But you may say, well, Simcha is an emotion. Well, how can one, how is it though that one can be commanded to have emotion? So first we have to realize that it is actually a commandment in Torah that we have Simcha. It is a commandment. So we can't just wait for some wonderful experience to happen in our life or a, an event um, day by day to um, <clears throat> evoke the feeling of the emotion of happiness, but it's a commandment. So how can one be commanded to be having an emotion? If circumstances are favorable and one is experiencing good fortune, one could have Simcha. But on the other hand, if one's experiencing adversity, we might feel dejected and it appears unrealistic then to command a person to have Simcha. So Simcha is not dependent on our circumstances. And that's a difficult one because if our sin, uh, if our circumstances are one of um, lack or illness or unexpected um, adversity in our life, then we would have the emotion. Uh, we can have the emotion of despair, hopelessness, sorrow, and these things are to be expected especially if there is a sudden uh, extreme illness or a tragedy or, or some um, just terrible thing, uh, terrible news that we receive, there can be that immediate emotion of anguish. But it's what, it's in, what he's trying to tell us, it's very important that we don't stay there, that we don't live in that, that emotion because then um, it becomes depression. Um, so at Savus depression and depression is not where we're going to live okay so even in the midst of these extreme situations that we may find ourselves in we have to find that uh, we have to get back to simca in our life 
So yes, it's an emotion, but it's an emotion that can be developed and that is actually, it, it, can, it can coexist with feelings of sadness, like we were just saying, but we have to avoid depression. So sadness is one thing, but sadness needs to be temporary because if we stay there too long, especially with grief. <clears throat> so let me just address that for one moment. Grief. Grief many times um, we see can cause depression, especially when someone loses a loved one that's very, very close to them. When a spouse loses, um, uh, when someone loses their spouse or when someone um, loses a child, the death of a child. This is where we have to be so cautious that oh, that we have already been in the process of developing joy in our life, the character trait of joy. Because if we don't have that, where we have the bitakon and Hashem, then there is a propensity to fall into a state of despair, hopelessness, and depression. And that is a very difficult uh, emotion to get away from. So let's, um, that is, that is just one thing that we need to uh, know that we've got to persevere in this midot and grab hold of the love for Hashem and the awe and the reverence for Hashem, which is the primary midot of the Torah has asked us to do. It is the Yaraz Hashem, the awe and reverence of Hashem. So how do we develop the awe and reverence for Hashem, the avos Hashem, the love for Hashem. For if we've seen Simcha as is as uh, as he says, in so much as Yira is often thought of as being fear, it's not too difficult to see that even with that, um, we can be subject to fear, but it's more like the fear of punishment, right? So, however. Um, Ahava and Simka are subject to the question, how can a person be ordered to have an emotion? Either we uh, feel or we don't feel something. But if we're commanded to act or not act in a certain way, but generating these emotions may seem really um, beyond our ability to do so. Let me just put it that way. So he says that we can draw upon the writings of our sages to help us understand what Simca is and how it's in regard to the celebration of the festivals we see, of course, uh, we're commanded to have Simca in Sukkot. We must have Simca in Sukkot. So regarding these wonderful uh, days, we can, you know, ex uh, receive and um, enjoy the actual emotion of serving Hashem with Simca. But it says that we have to be very careful because um, uh, Hashem was discouraged with the Israelites. And he actually tells us in Deuteronomy 28, 47, that um, he was very disappointed in them because they did not serve him uh, with Simcha. So Simcha is... Whew, is that imp all important midot? And what did we say? It is. It is the foundation. It is the foundation of everything. So let's look at um, Tehillim one twelve. Uh, I love that Rabbi Torsky tells us that um, when we are, <clears throat> um, some of us let me have this morbid expectation. We may get up um, in the morning. Instead of facing the day with joy and expectation that Hashem will be with us and, and help us as we serve him with Simcha, we may uh, awake in the morning and have a fear and dread of the day. A fear and dread of what is the bad news that I'm going to receive today? What is the problem I'm going to face today? What um, Sometimes we get up and we just have dread of everything. We dread going to work. We dread being around co-workers. We dread, we dread, 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 dread. And so we've got to get away. That is a very evil midot to have is dread because dread is a lack of bitakon, trust. 
It's a lack of trust because we must trust Hashem that whatever we face today, it's Gamzula Tova. It is for the good, it's for the best. So uh, Rabbi Torsky tells us that if we are someone who has, um, uh, that we, we fight that um, spirit of dread every day, we should read Psalm 112. And this is something, Psalm 112 is a uh, scripture that I read over my husband on Erev Shabbat every Friday. And it goes like this. Hallelujah. Praiseworthy is a man who fears mighty, <coughs> excuse me, who fears Adonai, who intensely desires his commandments. For mighty in the land will his offspring be, a generation of the upright who shall be blessed, and riches and wealth are in his house, and his righteousness will endure, endure forever. Now, this is where it's so important that we have Bittakon and Hashem, for even in darkness there shines a light for the upright. For he is what? Here's his midot, compassionate, merciful, righteous, and good is this man who is also compassionate. And he lends. He's not selfish. He conducts his affairs with justice. He's just. He surely, it says then, if he has these midots, surely he will never falter. An everlasting remembrance will this righteous man remain. And of evil tidings, he will have no fear, for his heart is firm and confident in Adonai. His heart is steadfast. He will not fear, and he will soon look upon calmly with his, in, his tormentors, because he is distributed widely to the destitute. His charity, his good deeds will endure forever. His power will be exalted in honor. But the wicked man, not so. But he will see what the righteous man is acquiring, and he, is, he will gnash his teeth and melt away. And the ambition of the wicked will perish. So we see that it's so important. These midot, these midot, what we have to fear and have the awesome respect for is Adonai, the creator of the universe. He says, I knew that I... Uh, I knew that I was at the mercy of irrational problems and I needed to reinforce my bitacon, he says. And so I found this verse in uh, Psalm 112 in verse 7 that goes on to talk about not having fear if our heart is firm in Adonai. So that he says that this is a very effective psalm to read if you are someone who uh, battles with fear and dread of the day. Fear and dread of the day. The Midrash states that when the patriarch Jacob thought that Joseph had died, he complained to God and had turned. He said, you know, I think, Hashem, that you have turned away from me. <laughs> and whereas Hashem said to him, I am manipulating things to make your son a viceroy of the largest empire on earth. Yet you are complaining to me. Breshis Rabbah 9113 reminds us that there are no there are many incidents that fall into this category. Whew. So our our motto is God is working even when we don't see him working. He is working. He is behind the scenes. And everything that Adonai is doing is for our good. It's for our best. Gamzula Tova. Gamzula Tova. I love this Midrash. Uh, it is, can you imagine Yaakov um, after the, his uh, sons came back and, and showed him that um, uh, uh, Joseph's coat that with the blood on it and said he must have, you know, he was killed by a wild animal. And the Midrash tells us that, that Yaakov complained to Adonai. And what did Adonai say? I am moving things around. I am manipulating things right now that your son, Yaakov, is going to be the viceroy of the largest empire on earth. And don't complain to me because these things have come not just for your good, but for the good of the whole nation. Hallelujah. For the whole nation. Oh, so if we could just get it in our minds and our hearts that everything that happens is for our good, for those of us that love Hashem and for those of us who know that we have been called according to his purposes. The, the Avos 
uh, Hashem helps us to understand that there is a process. Obtaining Simcha is a process. Just like um, the process of uh, working out our uh, a bad adult of anger. It's a process to get in to get anger out of our heart and out of our thinking, out of our response. Some of us have um, had uh, a bad character trait of anger, which uh, the Torah tells us, Ecclesiastes Solomon says that anger is in the heart of a fool. Wow. So if you don't want to be a fool, you have to get anger out of your heart. But it is a process. It is a process because it becomes a natural response, a base, natural base response to unpleasant circumstances. Therefore, we have to work on that bad characteristic of, of uh, anger and replace that with bitacon. And trust, which then brings shalom, 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 shalom. Um, there's a, a verse in a letter that we think that Yaakov, the brother of uh, Yeshua, wrote this. And I think in times past, if you're familiar with this particular letter, supposedly by Yaakov, that it did not seem... Um, appropriate, that it seemed unreasonable. And that is, Yaakov says this, consider it pure joy, <laughs> my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your amuna will develop patience and perseverance, of course, must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Count it all joy when you fall into all these different trials and temptations and all of these terrible situations that uh, we may be facing. Count it all joy. Well, we can count it all joy if we are allowing trials and temptations to work good midot in our life, good character traits. So we have to think of trials and tribulations, which as long as we are alive on this earth, they will certainly be here. They will certainly confront us on a daily basis. Some are little and some are big. Some are little hills and some are giant mountains of pain and discomfort and um, disappointment and many things that you can describe. It goes on and on and on. And it's daily. It's daily. But Hashem is using all of these trials, these temptations, our tribulations to work a beautiful definition of our character traits within us so that we can fulfill our purpose. So it's so important that we understand and know specifically what each one of us purpose is in this life. So once again, why did Hashem put our soul here in this generation right now, right here, right now? Why are we here? What is our mission? What is your mission? What is your purpose? So important that you know that you know why Hashem created you and put you in this generation for right now. Well, I can tell you one thing. You do have a purpose. You are a part of the plan of Hashem. And no matter how minuscule you feel like your life is, it is vital. It is so vital. And we know that because Hashem created your soul and you put him, he put us in earthly vessels for his glory, for his purpose. So I encourage you, ask Hashem, if you don't already know what your purpose and your mission is, ask Hashem because he wants you to know more than you could ever imagine that you would want to know. But if you know what your purpose is, then you will understand more and more about your character traits. And also, um, I would encourage you to look at your giftings. 
In other words, um, you may ask Hashem, what are my giftings? And how, what, how do I use the giftings that I have? I, I tell people often, look in your hands. Whatever is in your hands, those are your giftings. Meaning, look at who you are. Look at your desires. What is it that uh, when you do these things, whether, um, you know, like maybe you are, I have feelings of um, helping people in the medical field, like nursing and a doctor, or perhaps um, it is your wealth that you have, you know, that you have a gift to finance things like financing orphanages or yeshivot, um, these types of things. There's so many giftings that people have. And just so look in your hands and say, Hashem, what have you placed in my hands? Because these are your giftings. And this is where you find your purpose. If you're using your giftings for Hashem, for the kingdom of Hashem, to glorify him, then you know that you are fulfilling your purpose. And this is the only place that you will find joy is in fulfilling the purpose for you being here. Amen. So this is the road to joy and happiness. So a person who is able to work on yourself to obtain the purity of your midot is truly a happy person, he says. A truly happy person. We must not allow bitterness and anxiety um, and, and these pursuit of, of things that are temporary. We know that the pursuit, let's say, of money, we can see that the pursuit of money is like putting, um, throwing money in a well throwing gems down a well where it disappears quickly. So you have a temporary feeling of happiness or security, but it's fleeting. And so you can never have enough. There's this constant um, pursuit of gaining more wealth, gaining more wealth. And this is the same thing that has to do with envy and lust and the pursuit of things, it says in Ethics of Our Father, the pursuit of these things, the lust for money, the lust for power, the lust for recognition, these things remove a person from the world. So let's focus on our midot. Let's focus on why we are here. What is our purpose? Because then we will work on our midot, our character traits. We will refine them because we know it's because we are in covenant with Hashem. And this brings Him praise and glory. And this fulfills what He wants us to do. And as we know, ultimately, as as a, as a Jewish people, that we are here to gather in the holy sparks of the nations. On the other hand, we have to be purifying our midot in order to experience happiness. And when we rejoice, Hashem is rejoicing. So one last and final word. As you are in rejoicing in Torah, remember that is Torah, Yeshua HaMashiach, that is a rejoicing with us. So when you take hold of your Torah, know that Hashem is taking hold of you. And there you have joy, unspeakable and full of glory. <sighs> so this ends our uh, moments today, working on our midot of happiness and joy. And know that Hashem is working behind the scenes. So you can say today, whatever happens today, Gamzula Tova, it is for my good, Bashem Yeshua. So until we meet again next Wednesday at noon, I say Shalom Aleichem.